Now that we've done all the setup, let's have a look at what our shop class needs to look like. First we need, it's an NS object subclass and it needs a few properties. One of them is an NS array which will hold all our product identifiers. So this reverse domain notation that we've set up as an in-app purchase. Know that you can have more than one product and you can loop through all of them. So if you give your customer a choice of several products, you can use the same shop class. We're only going to implement one, just know that it's available. We're also going to need an SK product property. This is the one that will hold the product that the customer currently wants to buy, so we need to hold on to that. Our shop class also needs a shop delegate property. So our class will let other classes be a delegate of the shop class. We do that so that when we initiate a UI alert view later, that another class can be the delegate of that alert view. Our shop class also implements the SK products request delegate protocol. And that is something that is store kit specific. We're going to see how that is used. It's basically, it basically lets the app store call back to our shop class and say, hey, I've got those products here. Uh, I can connect. Everything is cool. Uh, would you like to go ahead with the purchase? So this is going to be called the first time we want to make a purchase. And the App Store then responds to our class with a notification and our class can then react to that. Let's see how that works in code. I want to create a brand new Xcode project here. It'll be a single view application and I'll call it in-app purchases. Maybe I'll make it a universal app today. I'm going to leave the company identifier untouched because I'm going to change that later anyway. And I'll just whack it on my desktop. The first thing I'm going to do is change the bundle identifier. Notice that right now the, I can't change the last part of the bundle ID. So we'll go to info and find the key for bundle identifier. And I'll replace that with my own. com.verslewis.bymy. That's my test. While I'm here under capabilities, I'm going to find the in-app purchase section here. And you don't have to open it up, it just tells you what's happening here once you flick that magic switch, which will apparently take care of everything. So if we do that, it picks my team from the list here, choose your team, and it will link the store kit framework to your app, and it will put the correct entitlements file in here. And that's all you need to do in Xcode 5.1. Next, I'm going to have a look at my storyboard. Perhaps I'm going to do this for the iPhone, just because the iPad storyboard is so big it doesn't fit on my screen. And I'm going to select my view controller uh, so that I can add some buttons and functionality much easier here. I'll select it, head over to Editor, and select Embed in Navigation Controller. That will scroll off the screen. But it will also give me the ability to put two buttons here and there. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. UI bar button item. I have one here and one here. I'm going to change those. On the left, I'll say restore. And on the right, I'll say purchase. I'm also going to add a single label in the middle. And I'll call it update me. Let's hook these three things up. I'm heading over to the assistant editor. First, maybe the purchase button. And the restore button. Those are outlets, just like that label. I'll call it version label, because this is the thing that we're going to update from our UI, and we're going to say free version or full version, free or full or light and pro, something like that. We'll be creative along the lines. We also need two actions for those buttons so that they're meaningful. Let's put them underneath our properties here. There, purchase button pressed and restore button pressed. That should be it for the storyboard.
Right now, there's nothing for us to do in the view controller or the app delegate. We're going to go through that shortly after. Let's start building our shop class. So command N to create a new Objective C class. Yes, Objective C, not Swift. <laughs> We're going to create a subclass of NS object, and I'm going to call mine shop. I'm going to declare all these properties in the header file so that they're all public. We don't have to worry about any of them being public or some being private. They can all just be public. That makes our lives a bit easier. First of all, let's import the store kit framework. Since Xcode 5, we can use the at sign for that. At import store kit with a semicolon. And let's specify these properties that I've mentioned earlier. First, we need an array. I'll call it all products. We need another property, which is an actual SK product. And I'll call it this product. And the third one is a delegate property, so that other classes can be the delegate of this class. This can be weak. And it's of type ID, and we'll call it delegate. We're also going to need two methods that need to be public, but we're going to worry about those later. Right now, let's create a custom initializer for our all products array. In the implementation file, easiest thing is just type the hyphen and start typing all and then we'll come up with this all products and this is going to say if we don't have a variable called all products let's create one and initialize it with an array of products we would like to be in that array And that's just an array of strings, and the strings are all your product identifiers. So in my case, I had copied it. I'm only going to use one here. But if you have more, just separate them with a comma. And then we'll return that variable. And that's our custom initializer done. So if anyone asks for an all products array, they're going to get this back for sure. And here comes our first public method. I've totally forgotten to increase that font a little bit, so I'm going to make that a little bit larger, and then you can read it much better. There. Better. Right, so yeah, the first public method. I'm going to call mine validate product identifiers. And what we're going to do here is we're asking the App Store, hey, I'm supposed to buy this product with this reverse domain URL thing here. Does that exist? And if it does, we're getting back a product. And the init with product identifiers wants to have a set. Uh, we only have an array, but we can create a set. Set with array and just give that our array. Forgotten that. And then we'll call the start method on that request. And that's all there's to it. And since this is public, let's copy the signature and add it to our header file. There. When the App Store gets back, while we're in the header file here, when the App Store gets back to us, it will call a delegate method. So we better conform to that protocol. It's a bit of a weird one. Uh, it's called the SK Products Request Delegate. I'll put that in the header file here behind our add interface statement. And I'm probably going to get a little warning here now that I haven't, there we are, that I haven't implemented the proper methods yet. So let's do that next. This is the answer from the App Store saying, hey, yes, we have that product in store, or no, sorry, we don't have that product in store. And that's just one method that comes up here, one signature, products request, request did receive response. And we want to have a look at that response. So what this method is doing is saying 
There is a products request, yes, ours, that we've sent away, so we could grab a reference to that. We don't have to, but we could. Did receive response, SK products response, response. So we're interested in the response here. First, we'll grab a reference to that product because this is the only time we're being passed a proper SK product. So let's grab that. I only have one product in here, so I can just grab first object, but this would be the time you'd have to loop through all the products that would be available. And in fact, I'll add a comment to this as well. Now that we have a product, let's display a store UI. So we don't have anything to display yet, but we're going to add the method here that would make that happen, the if-then statement. So Here we ask, can we actually buy things? And if we can, we'll display the store UI. If we can't, then we'll display an appropriate error message. Under settings on an iOS device, you can allow users to make in-app purchases. So usually, if your kids are under five and you don't want them to rake up a massive credit card bill, then you set that to off. And if it's your own phone, it's usually set to on and you can go ahead and make purchases. But it's a good idea to check this here. Since we don't have any methods that we can call here, let's create some that display the store UI. So I'll create two methods here. The latter one is just going to be a uh, start with the easy one. It's just going to be a UI alert view. We don't need a delegate. And this will bring up a UI alert view saying, hey, you can't buy anything, just like it says here. Let's call this under else. Can't buy anything, there we go. The display store UI is gonna be a little bit more complicated. It's time to create a store UI. And because this is a sample app, it's gonna be fairly simple. What we're gonna do is create a UI alert view that shows us the buying option and the cancel option. And later on, we're even gonna add a restore option, but not right now, just you know, keeping things simple. It will pull in the title and the description from iTunes Connect, just like we set it up earlier, and it will display the price in the local currency. This is going to involve a little bit of code that involves an NS number formatter, but we'll, we'll tweak it. It's not much to worry about. I'm pasting the code to the number formatter on the article, so you can feel free to copy and paste that. And once the user has made a decision, if he wants to buy it or not buy our product, then uh, UI Alert View Delegate will respond to that. Uh, the thing is that Delegate is not going to be the shop class. Another class will be the delegate for that method and make the decision as to what's going to happen next, like a success message or whatnot. So let's build this thing. Currency style. Now the locale will show us the price either in US dollars and the currency symbol is going to be placed correctly and we're going to grab that from our product that's currently being purchased. So we can say self this product price locale. And while we're here, let's create that price. There. So self this product price is just the number and we're formatting it with the date formatter so that it correctly displays the dollar sign in front of the price or some countries have it after it and some countries have a comma, some have a point and so forth. So the number formatter is going to take care of all that. Don't worry too much about this code, it's all in the article on my website so feel free to copy and paste that here. This sets that up. Now let's create a UI alert view that displays these options. This, again, this looks a little bit complicated, but it really isn't. 
the title we can take directly from iTunes Connect, so hence it will be in our product. So self, this product, localized title. And the message is pretty much the same. It's going to be the localized description. So the title and the description is exactly what we've added in iTunes Connect. Delegate is interesting. Delegate is not self because that would mean the shop class is going to react to the outcome of the button press, the outcome of what the user is going to select. We don't want that. We're going to call this class from our view controller later. So we're going to say self delegate. And then the class that's calling the shop class can respond to whatever button the user presses. Cancel button, we're going to make the price because that will say buy this for 99 cents. Other button titles, we're just going to implement one and we'll say maybe later. We're going to implement restore in another part of this course. So right now we're only going to have two buttons. Later on we're going to augment this with another button which will allow you to restore the purchases. And it's always good custom to tag my alert view. This one's going to be one. The tag, in case you didn't know, is an integer number that you can add to an alert view in case you display five of them and you only have one delegate that reacts to all of them. Then you can ask, hey, which alert view was this? Which tag did it have? And then react accordingly. And then I'm going to show this thing. Great, that's our store UI done. That's our we can't buy anything done. That is, well, we need to implement it here, of course. Yes, we can buy stuff. So self display store UI. If you're dealing with multiple products, you can modify the method signature here and take a product in. And then instead of using self this product, you're just going to use the product that you're passing in. I think on my article that I've written about the in-app purchase, that's how I've done it there. So it, it doesn't really matter. We only have one product. If you have multiple products and you need to call this method with different products, then you just pass a product in and query that for price and description. The last thing you need to implement here Perhaps I'll do that above here. It's the show me the money method, the make the purchase method, the telling the app store, hey, if the user wants to go ahead, go and bill him, and if that was successful, get back to us. So we're going to call it make the purchase. Before I continue, I'm going to copy that method signature. I'm going to add it to my header file because it also needs to be public. We want to call it from other classes. In our case, the view controller. We do this by adding a payment to the SK payment queue. First, we create a payment with our product. And then we'll add that payment to the SK payment queue. And since this is another request to the App Store, the App Store goes and does stuff and then gets back to us with another method. We're going to implement that in the App Delegate and we're going to look at that in the next video.